Hello, hello everybody and welcome back to SC Aviation to this first part of our video from Bristol to Manchester. We're gonna fly, we're gonna do the full flight. I'm gonna explain to you how to do the complete flight, everything, I'm not gonna miss anything, so I hope you enjoy. First thing, you're gonna go to simbrief.com to even before opening x -Plane, you have to plan your flight. So you're gonna go to simbrief.com, it's totally free, it's the one I recommend. You have to create a username and password, but it's completely free. Once that's done, you go to Dispatch and My Flight Plan. Here I'm just gonna log in quite fast. And in this new menu, you go to New Flight. Perfect. So when you open your new flight, this window appears. So you're gonna start fill those to fill those things. First one, the code of the airline. For example, if you have an airline like Southwest, the code is SWA. An airline like KLM, for example, it's KLM, but it's only three letters, so you have to find the code. In this case, we're flying KLM, precisely. The three letters are perfect. Our name is gonna be 546, KLM 546. We're gonna be departing from Bristol and arriving from Manchester. Now, you might ask, if I just tap here Bristol, I just, cannot write anymore. So for that, you have to find the ICAO code of the airport. What are we going to do for that? You're gonna open your apps. As you can see, these are the apps that we're gonna be using today. And you're gonna go to this one, which is called FlightRider24. It's also free. So I'm using free apps for now. And you're gonna go to the map and you're gonna search for the airport we're gonna be flying to and from. So in this case, here is Bristol, here is the airport. So I'm gonna click it. And I see that the code is BRS slash EGGD. The EGGD is the ICAP code because it has four letters. So we're gonna tap that here, EGGD. And then in Manchester, Manchester is down here. So we're gonna tap it in the airport and it's AGCC in aeronautical alphabet Echo Golf Charlie Charlie. Cool. We can get rid of Flight Error 24 for now. Now, your aircraft type. Here you have two options. First one is to select any of the aircraft that are already in the menu or to create a custom one. I created one here in the My Fleet button. It's also very, very easy. You can create with the specifications that x has. How? You go to x you compare, and you start inputting them. But it's okay if you use the, the 737 that appears here, that I go down. But I created the exact one, so here it is. November 737SC. So 737 from x -Plane. So as you go down, you're gonna left all those things as they are, but you can change passengers, cargo, and zero free weight. So we're gonna fly today with full passengers. We're gonna fly today also with full cargo. We want to transport as much as we can with this airplane, and the zero free weight is gonna be automatic. So for the departure and arrival runway that you see here, it calculates it automatically based on the weather, based on the standard airline procedures, but if you want to fly any specific runways, you can change them. So in this case, we do will gonna be departing via runway 27, but I'm gonna arrive via runway 05 left. Okay, do you wish to automatically select new seats and start for these runways? Yes. So now that we have runway 05 left, that's it. We're not gonna touch anything else right here. That's perfect. Once that's done, you want to go here to your menu on the right and check that you have the units in pounds and that you have all these things clicked and, and flight plan detailed. Why? Because that's gonna give you a further level of realism. And once that's done, go to generate OFP. Yes, I want to generate it. It's gonna start to calculate something by itself. Loading. 
perfect and it brings you to this page which is like better for us to to look and to understand so you can see here from the left to right and from up to down Erlen klm flag number 546 aircraft Boeing 737-800 call sign where klm 546 we are from origin Echo Golf Golf Delta, which is Bristol, to Echo Golf Charlie Charlie, which is Manchester. Our alternate is going to be Echo Golf November Victor, which actually I have no idea what it is. Uh, I think it's called Middlesbrough or Middlesbrough. I don't know, but you have to search for that later. We're going to be cruising at flight level 240. How did the website know? Because it compares the performance of the aircraft together with the current real weather, together with the usual flights that most airline flights have, and it combines them and does some algorithms to come up with flight level 240, so that's completely reliable. We are here, right here on the 25th of July, we're going to be departing at 30, 13, 15 UTC, that's the time in Greenwich. It, you don't have to depart at that exact time, it's, it just gives you like a, a schedule. The air time is going to be 35 minutes and the block time it's going to be an hour and, five, and seven minutes. What does that mean? It means that you're going to be spending 39 minutes in the air, so literally in the air, but while you taxi and while you prepare the flight already in the aircraft, it's going to be an hour and seven minutes. The block fuel is the complete actual fuel that we're going to need, so keep this number in mind. We're going to be using it later. 11,000 pounds no extra fuel and our zero fuel weight is going to be 138 300 pounds and our takeoff weight 149 those weights are important we'll be coming that coming back to them later this is our routing it's quite uh, complex to read but it's okay and the in the remarks you can see that it didn't take all the cargo that we asked for because we have a what this means is maximum zero fuel weight so it's very intelligent this means that we are flying with the current cycle. I don't know what this means actually. Our pounds are the units. Navlock, I don't know what that is. And ETOPS, yes, means that we are close enough to an airport to divert. That's not very important in short um, cross country flights in land. But for example, in transatlantic flights, when you are in the middle of nowhere, you have to comply with ETOPS. So you actually have to fly a little bit deviated to be able to reach an airport in case of an engine failure or something. No times. <coughs> yes, that means that we're flying with the current no times. Fuel factor, I don't know what that is. And now here you have our flight plan. So you can just click print view PDF. Wait for it to load and go through it. I'm gonna explain it very fast with the things that you need to that you actually need to, to take into account, yeah? So, first your flight cruise, flight level 240, your block fuel, which is here. If you go down, oh, sorry. This route ID, DAFTRE, and this route EGGD27, blah, 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 blah. That's gonna be very, very important. We're gonna be using that. And our weights right here where it says takeoff weight. Which of these two? The one on the left. Because the one on the right is the maximum. The one on the left is the estimated or the actual one. Apart from that, that's quite complex. I don't know what it means, but I could spend the whole day explaining it to you. And then you're going to go to this part which says, which says no terms. What are the notes? Are the information of the airport that you're going to? Every single thing you have to know it's here. So in this case, for our departure airport, we only have three ones, three notes. Bristol and Wessex Flying Club handling an Afghan subject to PPR. I don't know what that is, but it doesn't affect us. COVID-19 information. Well, we're not fine with COVID-19 in the virtual world. Jet A1 fuel available. And we're on frequencies 1 to 1.930 to with Bristol Delivery UK. Okay. Our destination airport. You can see we have some things. Taxiway Zulu will remain a single yellow painted center line designated as Zulu. Okay. 
COVID-19 information. Increase in runway 05 left ILS DME, cut one. Okay, so there are changes in the ILS. Taxiway Quebec closed due to work in progress. So that means we cannot taxi via Taxiway Quebec. So if you want, you can take a pen and pencil and start writing those things because you're going to need them. Runway says aircraft unable to deploy runway 028 or vacate runway 05 left via runway holding point Mike 1 will backtrack runway at ATC discretion. That's important. Oh, here's our alternate. It's called Durham Tees Valley. I had no idea. You also want to check your alternate. I usually don't check the whole alternate because it's very unlikely that you have to go to the alternate, but I check the runways. So I check if there is anything with the runways that we have to know. Now let's go to the runways section. Well, these no terms are long. Wow. That's excessively long. I didn't see the runway section. Let's go back again. Waypoint restricted airspace. Oh, this was the extended area around departure, sorry. So the airport no temps don't have anything with the runway, so that's perfect. You can see here that the RFFS is downgraded to CAT 4. So sometimes the procedures are downgraded momentarily or upgraded. Okay, so this is done. So take this in mind. Second thing that you want to do is go to this app, which is called Navigraph. Navigraph does require a subscription. That's not very bad, but trust me, it's worth it. If you don't have an Navigraph, you're going to have to search for the charts online. It can take you a while, but... Or you can find a software. Maybe there's something like Navigraph free out there. I haven't done the complete research. And here you go to Flights, Create Flight, and you're going to import from Simbrief. So in this case, I enter my username, and it's already there, the flight plan. That's very cool about this. So we're going to wait for it to load and you can see here it's the route it takes the information that Simbrief created and transform it into a more visual thing so you can see here the waypoints of all the route is here and we have our departure a route and an arrival so in this case there's the arrival we're gonna click this little arrow so the approaches and see we're going to do the transition right here. Okay, so there we have our problem because the ILS starts down there, as you can see. So what are we going to do? Quite easy. We're going to go to type edit route. Sorry, let me figure this out a little bit. We have to go from there to there. Let's look at the arrivals to see if we can change the arrivals or no. This is the first arrival that we have. And looks like all the approaches go there. So what we what you can do now here is look at the chart. So let's go ahead and see how the chart for ILS runway 105 left looks like. ILS DME runway 05 left. Okay, so it means that we're going to arrive here and then make a turn. Okay, that's perfect because we can go from here, this waypoint, Mersey, direct to here. So here is, there's not a continuous line, but in the airplane there will be. So that's check. Now we're going to go to our departure airport and start pinning charts. Pinning charts, what is that? We want to start to pin, this is called pin, the chart that we're going to use. So the SID, the standard instrument departure, it's going to be... B BCN one X ray, I guess that is this one. Reference chart. We want noise abatement and radar minimum altitudes. So, for those of you who don't know what a SID or a star is, they are standard procedures for departing and arriving an airport. Because if they didn't exist, ATC or traffic control will have to be giving vectors to the airplanes like crazy and organizing them by itself. So these are standard routes. For example. 
if I click to see the seats from Manchester, we have three ones. The Beacon, BCN one X-ray, the Body one X-ray, and the Exmo one X-ray. So these are three standard departure procedures. For example, at Manchester, the arrivals, you click the little eye and they appear all here. In some airports, you have a lot. And today we're flying these ones. Then we go to the destination airport. And now select the ones that involve us. So our arrival is the MIRS 1 Alpha. So MIRS 1 Alpha. Approach, we're going to be doing the ILS from way 05 left. Taxi, we need the airport briefing because we're going to brief the airport. All the airport briefing, that's what real airline pilots do, so you have to do it. Airport, not the departure because we're not departing, we're arriving. The airport itself. I don't know what it's not pinning. Okay, I have no idea. Airport info take of minimums. Parking stands and coordinates. We need that. Airport itself. This is the airport diagram. We're going to pin that. And the last one I told you about, which didn't select. Oh, what's this one? And let's pin that. So we're going to go through that. This is quite of a boring part of your flight, but it's very, very important that you do it. You have to go through all these charts and look at them. I'm not going to do it because I could have you here the whole day. But mainly you want to see in the charts the frequencies. Start writing them down. You have to write it down a lot of things. Take a look at the airport. Start thinking about where you are. So here in the way in the apron, the run we're going to be departing from. So start thinking about possible taxi routes. Look at the minimum conditions for the runway. So you can see here that the minimum runway visual range or visibility is 75 meters with approved guidance system or HUD. So we do have a HUD in the aircraft. So the minimum that we can have is 75 meters. That's for you, Oliver, there. Then you go to parking stands. Look at where we are. So where is our, where is our airplane going to be parked? Just take a fast look at it. See if there is anything that you have to care about in ground movement, taxi routes. Then look at the departure. So you can see that we're departing runway 27. We're going to be doing this movement direct to this VCM VOR. You can see that we have maximum 250 knots below flight level 100, unless otherwise authorized. Also take notes of all those restrictions. Take notes of the departure frequencies and the radar frequencies. Transition altitude is 6,000. Take notes about that. All the important things. You can see that this is the routing. We're going to climb straight ahead to cross D45, even D5.2 at or above 3,000, maximum 6,000. We're going to turn right. We're going to intercept BCN runway 1. Sorry, BCN radial 150 inbound and cross D20.0 BCN above 44,500 by maximum 6,000. And then to BCN. I'm gonna go to radar minimum altitudes. This means the minimum altitudes that we have to have. So in the layers of the mark, you have to be at least at those altitudes. You cannot get any lower. Notice abatement procedures. So these are the kind of routes and the things that you have to know about noise at night. So also take a look at that. When I am clearly gonna do the flight, you have to take a look at that. And then noise abatement for the APU, the auxiliary power unit. So read that, should restrict the use of it to the minimum time necessary, okay. And then in the airport, look to the arrival. You start briefing, this is called briefing and it gives you situational awareness of what you're going to do. So here looking at the charts, you can see here, take notes about the frequencies, the airport elevation, the restrictions for speed. So we're gonna, so you can see that we're gonna come here from Monty. We're gonna turn right at Mirzi and right here direct to the ILS. Then the ILS, this is the most complex chart. Here, take notes about the frequencies. 
So Manchester Rider, Manchester Director, Manchester Tower, Manchester Ground, the localizer frequency, the final approach course, the misapproach procedure. You can see that we're gonna go right here, direct to here, do this left turn, correction right turn, and land. You can see also here that we have a minimum RVR 75 meters. So we cannot have minimum visibility to 75 meters. Here it is. This is our chart. Then go to the airport briefing. Oh, yes, I know it's boring, but you have to go through all this text. I'm not going to do so because I could spend the whole day reading them, but real pilots do, trust me. They look at how the airport works and everything, everything, everything. Then the airport diagram. So take a look at the possible routes that you're gonna have. So we're gonna right here, land at runway 05 left. You can see that we're probably gonna be vacating via hotel or Foxtrot or Papa. And then take a look at how you're gonna go to the stand. So yeah, kind of think about it there. Parking stands and coordinates. Take a look at all the stands, how they work. Possible hotspots. Hotspots are places where you have to be very careful of because there can be confusions. And then the airport info and takeoff minimums. So you can see here again the thing with the RVR, the 75 meters, some additional info. So this is Navigraph. Once that is done, you go to another app. It's called Aero Weather. It's also free. Go to plus and check the airport. So go here left, you see EGGD. Okay, so this is Bristol, save, and look at the weather there. If you're flying with your weather, take a look about it. Wind, visibility, clouds, temperature, dew point, pressure. Write important things down. And then also our arrival airport, which is EGCC, Manchester. And also look at that. In this case, we're not flying with real weather, but you have to use it if you are flying with real weather. Okay, so this is the plan of the flight. So you can see that we haven't even touched the aircraft at explain, but we already know the route. We already know the ILS. We already know what we're going to do. We already have a map of how it works. So this is the first part of this video. Be very careful because then we're going to go to the aircraft and in the aircraft is where things get complicated. Now, before going, one last thing is that for you to know some extra things which are not very important, you can go to your browser and check the KLM because it's the airline that we're flying terminal at Bristol so that you can see where the KLM airplanes park and also KLM terminal at Manchester. So let's click it here. Maybe if we can get something. And you can see here, KLM Royal Dutch Airlines operates both in Terminal 3 and Terminal 1. So that's interesting. Let's go to Navigraph again. Go to airport right here. Better parking stands. Both in Terminal 3 and Terminal 1. So you can start choosing a possible gate by looking at that. Also, if you want to be more realistic, you can go to your Flatter 24 map. Let's make it bigger and visually check for blue aircraft. <laughs> I know it's quite funny, but it's useful. If you see a blue aircraft, then there is where an airplane of KLM parks, or you can just click the airport take arrivals, load earlier flights, and start looking for KLM flights. Here is an Amsterdam aircraft. See the route, and then look where they parked. So you can see they parked here. So that means we can use that gate. That's perfect. So this was our fir first part of the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. This is the first plan, as you can see here, let's go back to Navigraph. 
we now we haven't even got to the airplane, but we already know how our flight's gonna be. This is called situational awareness. This is what makes pilots so successful in the route and avoids problems. This is how the Europe airspace works. So next video is going to be on how to actually set up the aircraft. Hope to see you all there. And then we're going to be actually flying the route together with our navigraph chart. So I hope you enjoy. Bye bye.